This is Pastor Gabriel Swaggart. We're so thrilled to have you joining us today for another message right here from Crossfire Youth Ministries. I know and pray the music's going to be a blessing to your heart, and beyond a shadow of a doubt, the preaching of the gospel is going to minister to your soul. So sit back and enjoy this message coming to you from Crossfire Youth Ministries. Você pode Eu sentir a presença do Senhor nesta noite? Amém. Ele está aqui para encontrar a sua necessidade. Obrigada, Jesus. Vamos adorar a Ele neste lugar. Nós te adoramos, Jesus.
Right Agora now, ele está here. aqui. E não no importa onde você está, from, está no de onde você vem, o que você está fazendo, o que você tem se envolvido, o que você tem que fazer é buscar pela fé. fé. E tocá-lo, toque pela fé agora, ele está aqui right agora. E ele, ele quer mudar o seu coração e a sua vida, eu quero que a Grace cante o segundo verso mais uma vez. Eu quero que você adore o Senhor, por favor, vamos adorar.
If you have your Bibles tonight, I want you to turn with me again to the Epistle of Romans, the sixth chapter of Romans. We're going to be continuing with our study. Most of you, if this is your first time here, we began last week a study on the sixth chapter of Romans. The sixth chapter of Romans is, without a doubt, in my opinion, the greatest chapter in the entirety of the Word of God. Because in this chapter, it gives you the problem and the solution to the problem. And if we don't understand the solution, we'll never understand the problem. I'm going to say it again. If you as a believer don't understand the solution, which is Jesus Christ and Him crucified, you'll never understand the problem. Some would say, well, well you, you got that backwards. No. If you don't understand the cross, you'll never understand the sin nature. Okay. Romans chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. Paul would write, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we who are dead to sin live any longer therein? And I want to use for a subject, ministering just for a few moments tonight, the sin nature. The sin nature. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ, and we are, we need your help tonight to deliver this of which you've laid upon our hearts. Lord, I'm asking that the Holy Spirit would come and to lead us and guide us into all truth. Anoint our words. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. The sin nature is a subject that, in all honesty, it's not an easy subject to deal with. And if I could be perfectly real with each and every one of you, it's a subject that we don't really like to deal with. As a youth minister, and as a youth pastor, we always want to deal, we want to try to deal with something that's uplifting, to give you something to, to give you some hope. But in order to do that, in order to be balanced, we have to deal with this thing called sin. And if we did not deal with it, I would not be doing my job. And there is a movement going on, and it's been around for quite some time, so it's not, no, it's not something that is new, it's something that's been around for quite some time. But it's beginning to sweep the church world, and that's this. There is a thought process and a movement afoot that says that as a minister, you don't deal with sin, you don't talk about sin. There's no reason for you to talk about sin. Because when people come in, they don't want to feel guilty whenever they leave. They want to be uplifted. And if you talk about sin, you'll give those individuals a sin conscience. But that's a wrong statement. Because really, in, in reality, without God, we all have a sin conscience. And even those sitting in the church today, most of them are not even saved. God help us. They have a sin conscience. And in all actuality, in order for them to understand the Savior, what he did at Calvary, they first have to understand who they really are and what they really are, which is a sinner. In order for anybody to be saved, they first have to understand that I am a sinner. I know people will say, well, if you just bring them to church, eventually they'll just evolve into becoming a Christian. That's a lie. You, there is no evolving when it comes to Christianity. You're either saved or you're not. And there's only one way to get saved, and that's to understand who you are and what you are and to understand who Jesus Christ really is, which we sang about here tonight. He is our Savior. He is our Redeemer. He is the one that went to Calvary's cross. I didn't do it. Nobody else did. Jesus Christ did that alone, and he did it all by himself. He didn't need my help. He doesn't, he doesn't need our help. But when you deal with sin, yes, at times when you deal with sin, it does make us uncomfortable. 
It does make us a little squirmy at times simply because at times the Holy Spirit will begin to move and prick your heart about what is being said. But understand, we're not really dealing with acts of sin. I want you to think about that. We're not dealing with acts of sin. We want to deal with the root problem, which is the sin nature, the doctrine of sin. Sin is the cause of all the problems, all the sicknesses, all the heartaches, and all the pain in this world. Some will ask, why does your God, the God that you serve, why does he cause people to be sick? Why does he cause people to starve to death? Why does he cause third world countries, the whole areas to, start, to suffer in starvation? And the answer, God does not orchestrate all that. That is Satan. That's sin. God has allowed it, but sin is the problem of it and sin is the cause of it. All the wars that has ever happened, sin has been at the root problem. All disease, it came as a result of sin. Gossip. Is a result of sin. But we want to deal with not the acts, we want to deal with the cause. You can deal with symptoms, but until you understand the problem, you'll never address the symptoms properly. Sin is a three-letter dirty word. But it is the cause of so many people who lost Perderem their lives suas or who had died morrer, not knowing him. A Deus. Much of the a church world, and igreja, when I say the church world, igreja, I always include our age, youth groups, youth groups, ministries. And tudo mais. They don't Eles understand the same nature. They don't understand, understand what causes it, what it is, and how to stop it. But when you really look at the sin nature, first of all, let's go back just a little bit. Let's look at the origination of sin. Sin did not originate with Adam. I want us to understand that a lot of people think that sin originated with Adam. It did not. Sin originated with Lucifer. A created being by God, someone that God created in eternity past. And the word of God intimates that Lucifer was the most beautiful angel ever created. Music literally flowed. Ezekiel 28 tells us that music flowed from his person. Music flowed from his being. The great choir director of heaven. And yet the Bible tells us in Ezekiel 28 that pride found, his, it found its way into his heart. Thinking that he can be greater than God. And sin originated with Lucifer. Let me say this for a minute. I'm just going to say this and move on. Satan, one of Satan's greatest accomplishments that he's been successful with is perverting the music of God from glorifying God to now glorifying self. And I want to leave you with this. I heard this for the first time today. A gentleman was in our office here today from another state. He works... He does some work for us, and I'll just leave it at that. And he came in for a quick trip to visit and to introduce us to some people. I've known this man all of my life. I think he knew me from the time that I was born. So that's 34 years that he's been, really longer than that, that he's been associated with my family. 
And he Quem made this statement. Most of you Muitos know that one of my relatives was one of the founders of rock and roll. Do rock and roll. One of the creators um of rock, rock and roll. roll. When he was e in Bible college, speaking of my relative, his name is Jerry Lee Lewis. Lewis. Most of you, if not all of you, know who that name is. He went to Bible college for, for a short um time and got kicked out expulso. for playing My Porque God is Real on the piano in a boogie woogie style. And one of the e individuals um that got him, he was in college with this guy back in the late 1950s. He asked him to play on the piano on that particular chapel service. Well, they hadn't seen each other in 50-something years. And not too long ago, they ran into each other. My, my relative, Jerry Lewis, is he's about 79. He's the same age as my grandfather. But he'll be 79 in just a few months. And he ran into this preacher. He pastors a church now. And the preacher looked at my, my, my relative, Jerry Lee, and said, You still playing the devil's music? Jerry Lee kind of nodded. He said, Yeah, I'm still playing the devil's music, but the problem is the same music I'm playing is what you're playing. At least I know it's wrong. You didn't get that. I can tell he went over your head. He told that preacher, He said, Yeah, I'm playing the devil's music. But so are you. But at least I know that what I'm playing is wrong. And the guy just sat there, didn't know what to say. Let that sink in. I'll move on. Sin originated with Lucifer. It was what cost him his place in heaven. He e led a revolt rebelou, against God. Deus, One third of the angelic host anjos, fell with him. Com ele. And e when God Deus created Adam and Eve, Eve Lucifer, Lucifer, Satan, Satanás, our adversary, knowing that this was God's highest creation, man, Deus, would do então his best to do something to try to steal man from Deus. God. He approached Eve the serpent lent its faculties to Lucifer. That serpent spoke to Eve. Deceived Eve into taking a bite of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. She was deceived. We mentioned it last week. Eve was deceived. Adam was not deceived. Adam disobeyed. And because of Adam's disobedience, Adão, it was his failure dele, that brought the entirety of the human race down. And e you got to understand, Adam was Adão created by God, Deus, not with a sin nature. He didn't have a sin nature, but he acquired the sin nature through his failure. And because of that, disto, every person that has ever been born, nasceu, every one of us that are in this auditorium, every one of us that are watching and listening, we were born with a sin nature. Every one of us were born with two natures, a human nature, that's who we are. Our quirks, our idiosyncrasies, whatever makes up who we are, that's who we are. But we're also born with a sin nature, which is that inner bent to do that which is wrong. It's that inner desire that is placed within us that we're born with that leads us into the wrong way. That's why, as I mentioned, you have to tell somebody who they are, what they are, and what Jesus Christ has done for them because they are born in original sin. They are born with that inner desire, that inner bent to do that which is wrong. Every one of us. You don't have to teach a child how to steal. It just does it. Você não you don't have to teach. How many ever, I'll just let's stay um on that for a moment. How, how many of you ever been? Don't raise your hand. Please. But you've been somewhere and you see something that you want, but you ain't got the money to pay for it. And something on the inside of you tells you, just take it. And your heart begins to beat out of your chest. And you hear that voice and bullets of sweat are dropping off of your forehead. And you hear that voice, just take it. No one will know. Yes, someone will know. He will know. 
Você you vai know saber, and Satan knows. You may not get caught, pego, but you've already been pego. caught. Entender o que eu estou falando? Você You're nasceu born with that inner desire to do that which is errar. wrong. Todas Every as pessoas. Person. Você You're nasceu com a natureza humana nature, e uma natureza pecaminosa. Mas uma But vez once que você you é get saved, você vê, you see, there is a solution to the problem. The problem is sin, and there's always a solution. Jesus, Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And, and when you accept Jesus, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, a new nature is implanted on the inside of you. The divine nature. That sin nature is suppressed, it becomes dormant, and a new nature comes on the inside to rule and to reign. Mas But aqui está o problema. Problem. Se você não entende a cruz em relação à santificação, sanctification, o Espírito the Holy Spirit Santo em relação à santificação, então aquela natureza that sin nature that is once dormant, that has once been pushed down, not to bother you, all of a sudden begins to rise up Mais uma vez. more time. E domina você, a sua vida. E eu quero olhar para um a momento. natureza pecaminosa. Existem cinco áreas diferentes que o cliente se encontra em relação à natureza pecaminosa. A primeira área, estamos falando de crentes. A primeira área que o cliente se encontra aqui em relação à natureza pecaminosa, e todos nós já estivemos lá. A primeira área é a ignorância. At one um momento, point, todos we were all ignorant of what the sin nature was. I'm going to ask them to put this on the screen. I want to give a little definition of ignorance. Ignorant. I like to, I like to say it this way. Ignorance is when you don't know that you don't know. But a real definition of ignorance is a lack of knowledge, a lack of training, unaware, or lacking in knowledge or information as to a particular subject or fact. The fact is, as most of the church world is ignorant of the sin nature. They don't know that they don't know. They don't know what the sin nature is. And to be honest, that's where I was. That's where every one of us that are in this building here today or tonight, that's where we were. That's where most of you are. That's where some of you are right now. Ignorant of the sin nature, meaning we don't know anything about the sin nature. I was saved at the age of five. In just a few months, it'll be my anniversary in regards to serving the Lord. It'll be 30 years since... I got saved. I never thought I would actually say that, but that's a long time. 30 years. And yet, all through my teenage years and all through my young adult years till about the age of 22, I was ignorant about the sin nature. I didn't know what it was, never heard anything about it. And yet I would fight and fight and fight thinking, let me say it this way, not understanding what my problem was and getting to the place where I just felt like waving the white flag at times and saying, I can't take this anymore. Crying myself to sleep at night, saying, God, please, I don't understand it. I don't know what's going on. At times, staying up all night, saying, God, don't come back, because if you did, I'm not ready. Hmm. I was ignorant. I didn't know what, what my problem was. But I knew that there was a problem because I was hurt on the inside. In most churches, that's where they find themselves. They don't know anything about the sin nature because here's the thing. If you don't understand the cross, you'll never understand the sin nature. And understand this when we talk about the cross. We're not talking about the wood beam. 
Even now, it's been, I don't know how many years, dealing with the message of the cross, and people still write in, why are you talking about a wood beam? We're not. We're talking about the event, what Jesus Christ did on Calvary's cross. So get it out of your mind that we're talking about a wood beam. We're talking about what Jesus Christ did upon Calvary's cross. If we don't understand the cross relative for sanctification and the Holy Spirit for sanctification, we'll never understand the problem at hand. I understood the cross for salvation. I understood, I can tell you. But in regards to my everyday life and living, I had no clue. I was ignorant. I had a lack of understanding and a lack of knowledge. I did not understand it. And every e single todos one of us nós aqui estávamos na mesma condição, um momento ou outro. But Mas sempre that há aquele momento em que você clama a Deus, He's muito show tempo up, ele vai aparecer show e vai te mostrar a resposta. Ah, você não está oh, entendendo, meu Senhor. Oh, my Lord. Chegará There's um tempo que você vai clamar por tanto tempo. Where you get so desperate that you don't know what else to do except get on your knees before God and say, Lord, I can't handle this anymore. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. You're going to have to show up and you're going to have to do something. And it's always about right at that time where Jesus Christ will come down and show up and help you and show you what the problem is. Come on now. He did that with me. Sitting there trying to figure out what's going on, what my problem is. And on a Sunday morning at church, sitting on the platform, Papo turned around and pointed his finger to that camera and said, the answer is found in the cross. And when it happened, the light bulb went on. My Lord, my Lord, the light bulb went on. I knew what my, what my problem was, and I knew what my answer was. Glory to God. Hmm. Mm. Glory. I was ignorant. But understand this, God places no premium on ignorance. So now, you have and I have no excuse. We have no excuse because it's found in the pages of this book. We have no excuse. But there are a lot that are ignorant. Second, the first is ignorance. The second area where Christians are regarding the sin nature is denial. Give you a brief definition of denial. What does denial mean? Interesting. It means a refusal to believe a doctrine. That's the definition. A refusal to believe in a doctrine. I referred to it just a moment ago, the doctrine of sin, the sin nature. There are groups, there are individuals, there are preachers, there are people that do believe in the sin nature before you got saved. But the moment you got saved, oh, you have no more sin nature. It's gone. And they use 2 Corinthians, I believe it's chapter 5, where Paul said, we're now a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things pass away, all things become new. That's what they say, there's no more sin nature. Well, if that's the case, as common sense as ever, have you ever just thought about the fact that if that's the case, then why in the world is the book of Galatians found in the Bible? The book of Galatians was written to people, Christians, who battle the sin nature. It was written to believers battling the sin nature. And if it wasn't, if there was denial of the fact that they, if the sin nature wasn't there, then why is Romans 7 there? Romans 7 is Paul's autobiographical account of his own life after his salvation experience, after he was filled, after he was called to preach. The things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. They deny that it's even there. But if that's the case, why in the world did the Holy Spirit deal with something that doesn't exist?
Terceiro lugar. Primeira ignorância, segunda negação. Terceiro é uma engraçada. Licença. A definição de licença, eu não estou falando de uma carteira de motorista. Mas a definição de licença simplesmente quer dizer uma permissão para fazer ou não fazer algo. Excessivo ou uma liberdade ou ser livre. Existe uma linha de pensamento que para alguns que eu não posso fazer nada, né? Então eu vou ter que fazer qualquer coisa. And then there's another thought that says, oh, once you get saved, you don't need to repent about anything else anymore for the rest of your life. If you ever failed the Lord, what did you feel like whenever you failed? Terrivelmente, oh, didn't. Like you just couldn't wait to get things right with the Lord. You show me someone that never needs to repent for anything, I'll show you someone that's not saved. Eles They believe que that you can sin all you want to, quiser, grace will cover it. Doesn't não matter what you do, there's no need really to repent. Just live how you want to live, grace will always cover it. Paul's answer to that question, I just read it to you, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. I dealt with someone years ago. Their thought process was on these lines. Well, I, I can just do whatever I want to do. No consequences. There's always a consequence to sin. There's always a consequence to sin. Always. Not sometimes. Always. It may not be right then, but there is a consequence to sin. There is a consequence to sin. I'm going to say this because I want you to get this. There is a consequence to sin. Sleeping around with whoever you want will bring consequences that many of you can't handle. Drinking all you want to will bring about consequences you can't handle. Smoking a little bit will bring about consequences that you may not be ready for. Sin always has consequences. Sin is separation from God. It will always bring upon consequences. Grace does not give you the license to sin. Grace does not give you this salvation experience, the sanctification experience does not give you license to sin. But it gives you the license to live a holy life according to this book, according to the cross of Christ. There's a difference there. Now, I don't have time to finish. Senior physicians make you way back. Sin has a consequence. You can understand that. You can't get by with sin. You can fool your parents. You can fool me. Você pode enganar seus amigos, friends, mas você não pode enganar Deus. God. Você you não pode colocar um God's véu no você Deus God will never know. He always knows. Ele sabe o que você vai fazer antes de você you fazer. Do it. Sempre haverá uma consequência, consequência do seu pecado. Mas há uma solução para o seu pecado também. You see, I'm not going to leave that out because that's the most important part. There is a consequence, but there is a solution to your sin, too. That solution is found not in an ideology, not in a philosophy, not in, in, in any type of a man-made religion. It's found in a person, Jesus Christ, and what he did at Calvary. And guess what? He died to set you free. He died to make you free. He died to free you from the grip of sin. He died to break the dominion and the power of sin over your life. Ele não quer que você seja preso pelo pecado, mas Ele quer que você seja livre do pecado. Com toda a cabeça baixa, todo o olho fechado, ninguém olhando ao redor. Você está aqui nesta noite. Eu não planejei fazer isso. Mas eu sinto que eu preciso. Se há pecado na sua vida, eu não vou te envergonhar. Eu não quero te envergonhar. Mas se há pecado na sua vida agora, você tem que se acertar com Deus, eu quero que você levante a sua mão. 
Existe uma mão, outra mão, outra mão, outra mão, outra mão, outra mão. There's a hand. Mais alguém fala, pastor Gabriel, há um pecado na minha vida. E eu preciso me acertar com Deus. Eu quero que você se levanta a mão. Outra mão. Todo mundo fica de pé. Todos 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 de pé. Every head bowed and every eye closed, nobody looking around. Se você you raise that hand tonight. Fala, Pastor Gabriel, Gabriel, I need to make some things right with the Lord. I want you to step out of your seat right now. Eu quero and I want you to come to this front. Nobody's going to make fun of you. Nobody's going to embarrass you. Just come down to this front as they sing it right now. Whatever they feel led to sing. Make that, make it right with the Lord right now. At the sound of your great name. Now is your time. Don't wait for another moment. If there's sin in your life, at the sound of your great name. Now is the time to make things right with the Lord. Give us some altar workers to come right now. Give us some altar workers to come and stand behind these. No matter where you are, no matter who you are, this time is for you. This opportunity is for you. Come on, now is the time. Anybody else? He's here right now to touch you. He's here to forgive you. He's here to cleanse you. He's here to erase your past. He's here to erase your past. To give you a new present and a new future. Everybody to look at Pastor Gabe just for a moment. And I want you to be watching by television and listen to God's radio. Even though you may not be here with us in this bridge, this does not matter because God is where you are. And right now, when everybody just to look at me just for a moment, and I want you to know this and understand this. It doesn't matter what you've done. It does not matter what you have done. It doesn't matter what you've been involved with. The only thing that matters is what Christ has done for you. And some of you here, you know what Christ has done already. Some of you may have walked away. Você está aqui assistindo neste momento. Deixa eu falar em primeiro lugar. Deus te ama. Não me importa o que você fez. Eu não me importo o que você se envolveu no passado. Deus te ama. Ele quer mudar a sua vida. Ele quer te salvar. Ele quer apagar o seu passado. E te dar um novo futuro. Eu vou fazer aqui especialmente para vocês que estão nos assistindo na TV. A oração do pecador. Dizer palavras não vão fazer nada para você, mas crer nessas palavras, isto irá te salvar. É isto que vai te redimir. Você não é redimido pelo dinheiro, pela prata ou pelo ouro, mas pelo sangue precioso do Senhor Jesus Cristo, que foi morto antes da fundação do mundo. Enquanto nós oramos, Dizemos esta oração, eu quero que você repita esta oração depois de mim. Creia de todo o teu coração, com toda a tua alma e todo o teu entendimento. E o Senhor irá te transformar. 
Baixe sua cabeça, vocês que estão aqui, vocês que estão assistindo, vocês que estão ouvindo. Eu quero que você baixe sua cabeça e feche seus olhos, eu quero que você repita depois de mim. Querido Deus do céu, eu venho a ti, em nome de Jesus. Perdoe os meus pecados, a maneira que eu vivi e as coisas que eu fiz. Perdoa-me, lava-me, limpa-me de toda injustiça. Com a minha boca, eu confesso o Senhor Jesus e em meu coração. Eu creio que Deus ressuscitou a Jesus dentre os mortos e Ele está vivo. E agora, neste momento, eu creio que eu sou lavado, que eu sou limpo, que eu sou perdoado, que eu sou salvo, que eu nasci de novo, que eu sou uma nova criatura. Em Cristo Jesus. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now. Hallelujah. As we sing it one more time, let's just stretch forth our hands right now all across this building. Let's just take a moment. Let's just begin to worship Him. Let's begin to thank Him right now. Let's just begin to worship Him. Praise His holy name tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, sing it one more time. Obrigado por estar conosco hoje aqui no Culto Crossfire. Mais uma vez, eu creio que esta mensagem beneficiou seu coração, te exaltou e ministrou a sua alma e oramos que o Senhor possa ter te abençoado ricamente através da mensagem. Mais uma vez, obrigado por estar conosco e não perca nenhum dos cultos que vêm para você daqui do Ministério Crossfire.